for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today we are joined by Viju Krishnan, who is the All India Joint Secretary of the All India Kisan Sabha, which is uh, the largest farmers organization in India. And it is one of the organizations which is leading the ongoing farmers struggle. And May 26 marks six months of this farmers struggle. Uh, and the Samyuk Kisan Morcha, which is the collective of all farmers bodies, uh, who are part of the struggle, has issued a nationwide protest call for May 26th. And May 26th also marks seven years of the Narendra Modi government. So thank you, Comrade Viju, for joining us today. And uh, can you first start by telling us about the call for May 26th? You know, what uh, are the sort of actions planned? How is the agitation going to be like? And what is the sort of message that uh, you're trying to send the government? It is uh, six months after the uh, protest around Delhi has uh, started against the three anti-farmer um, uh, acts that was brought by the Narendra Modi-led BJP government. And it's also the seventh year of uh, Narendra Modi coming to power. And uh, on 26th, across the country, keeping in mind the uh, pandemic and the COVID protocols, we will have protests outside the uh, our houses uh, and uh, keeping the COVID protocol in uh, place, where the Samyuk Kisan Morcha has given this call, more than 500 organizations coming together. Other than that, the central trade unions, women's organizations, students and youth, and also the organizations of the oppressed sections, they have all come together in uh, support of this uh, protest action tomorrow. This is sending a clear message to the Narendra Modi-led BJP government that the people of our country are not going to accept the three acts that has been passed, uh, literally imposed on the people of our country during a lockdown period. The, also the uh, withdrawal of the rights of the working class that has been done by this government. It is a clear message against that, that we, are, uh, we stand united. It's not just a protest by the farmers of our country. It is a uh, unique uh, unity of the working masses as well as the peasantry of our country. That is sending a resolute message that come what may, we are going to resist and defeat these three uh, these policies of corporatization. Right. And uh, talking more about the farmers' struggle. So now that uh, you know we are six months into the movement. Where do you, how do you evaluate the movement's position today? And can you also tell us more about, you know, some of the major achievements and uh, struggles that the movement has faced? Yeah, actually, uh, I would like to say it is almost going to be a year after the protests erupted, because it is from June first week itself, we uh, uh, started this protest against the, uh, when the three ordinances were brought. Uh, but the protests uh, which have been going on, especially around Delhi, where millions of farmers have been sitting, uh, in protest against these acts, that has uh, that is six months old now. And in the six months, uh, it is to be noted that about close to 500 farmers have become martyrs in this struggle. Despite this uh, uh, kind of a situation, the farmers are co uh, continuing to uh, maintain a steely resolve that this struggle will go ahead. The biggest victory of this struggle has been that the unity that was built, an issue-based unity, uh, built involving more than 500 organizations that is still continuing with uh, despite all conspiracies of the ruling classes, despite all attacks by the government, repression, uh, different kinds of uh, cannot spread. The corporate media has been used to malign it and there have been divisive campaigns by the Sangh Parivar and so on. Despite all that, the unity has been retained so far and it is continuing uh, even in a situation of pandemic, uh, the people are out in protest. Uh, that is, I think, a, a major victory of this uh, struggle. Uh, along with that, the fact that initially what started as a farmer's movement has transcended into a people's movement. You are having the entire section of working class from the very uh, beginning of the Delhi Cello, November 26, also marked the general strike called by the central trade unions. The working class called the general strike and the uh, peasantry and agriculture labor organizations called for a rural strike. So it was, you had almost uh, 260 million uh, 
people participating in this uh, protest. So that is uh, something to be uh, noted also. It was a one of the biggest protests uh, across the globe. Now it is being uh, seen as one of uh, a historic protest uh, with millions participating, probably the biggest peasant protest in recent history. So that is uh, in the wake of uh, these, these protests, we have also seen different efforts to divide the uh, people who are part of the protest. There has been repression. We have seen how uh, uh, leaders have been arrested. There have been uh, barricades and uh, baton charging of the protesters. Uh, you, we have had the uh, protest sites being barricaded in a, in a big bay with uh, walls being built, concrete walls being built, as well as huge nails being put on the streets internet and water connection being cut. Despite all these uh, kind of repression, we have been able to continue this struggle uh, and uh, the farmers are ready for the long haul. That's a major victory of this struggle. Another victory is that it has not just uh, uh, restricted itself to the three acts alone. It has uh, also transcended in terms of issues to the uh, taking up the uh, issues of workers' rights if you uh, see a large number of organizations recently were also out on protests against the Zionist attack on Palestine, which was there. And uh, during the elections to the five uh, uh, states assemblies recently, a call of no vote for the anti-farmer BJP. So a campaign, a political campaign uh, against uh, uh, the BJP was also launched. And we had its results in terms of the, uh, the electoral reverses that BJP has suffered in the major states. So these are some of the uh, victories. The challenges, surely, I would say that uh, uh, it is uh, in times of agricultural activity, lakhs of uh, uh, farmers are sitting in this protest. They, all sections have lost incomes uh, due to the policies of the government. There is no income support. In, extreme, uh, in a situation of extreme uh, adversities, the farmers are still continuing the protest. That is, I think, the silver lining of this entire protest. And I suppose another challenge, of course, is the pandemic, which you have which you've just mentioned also that, you know, the government has absolutely failed to handle. So, uh, of course, the pandemic has had a devastating impact on people's lives and also the economy and employment. Can you also tell us more about how it has impacted farmers and the agrarian sector? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, from the very beginning of the pandemic in uh, 2020, when the lockdown was uh, announced itself, farmers uh, who were expecting a bumper harvest, we saw how there was a harvesting and marketing crisis and all sections losing incomes in a big way. The agricultural uh, labor lost em uh, employment opportunities. You had the migrant workers who were forced to literally uh, uh, into an, a biggest exodus after the partition where millions and millions of uh, 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 migrant workers were forced to flee to their uh, uh, home states and uh, with the government uh, not doing anything to help them. So that situation, even now in this present second wave, we find a lot of uh, uh, news coverage goes to the urban centers. But the rural areas, what is the situation, the dismal status of the health infrastructure? What is the situation of the vaccination uh, for the poor and the uh, peasantry and agriculture labor? We have been demanding free universal vaccination. Uh, what is the status of that? The uh, deaths that are going unreported. We are seeing today the, how uh, dead bodies are floating on the uh, Ganga. And uh, a large number of them come from these rural areas. That is a situation where um, uh, the people of the rural areas are losing incomes. They are not having proper health facilities. There is no uh, proper earnings so that they can get the best of medicines. Neither is the government pitching in to help them in any way. In uh, No kind of uh, income support is being promised by the government. So this is, we are staring at a crisis that uh, will literally blow up in the face of the uh, ruling classes here because uh, in a big way, the, uh, the rural areas are being affected by the uh, pandemic in, uh, in the recent phases. They are just being left to fend for themselves 
that is the situation we are, we have stories of oxygen shortages uh, sh- uh, stories of uh, shortages of medicines from the cities of our country but what is the situation the situation is far far more dangerous in the rural areas that is something which the government and all uh, uh, political uh, parties should give primary attention to and try and address the uh, situation if at all we have to uh, save lives in the rural areas and uh, in these uh, last 6 months or one year actually of the farmers movement as you uh, said how has the government's response been to the demands has it changed in any way in these last few months you know we see that of course talks were being held between farm leaders and the government but those seem to have stopped and we also see that for instance recently in haryana farmers are you know continuing to face violence so can you tell us about uh, these instances and the overall response of the government see the uh, government had almost 12 rounds of talks where they stuck to their position that these acts are going to benefit the farmers these acts were not something uh, which em- uh, were demands f- from the grassroots by the uh, farmers under a lockdown situation keeping the farmers and agriculture labor and the uh, toiling masses under lockdown these acts were brought to actually unlock the gates for corporate profiteering so um, uh, the government has only stuck to its adamant position that it is not going to withdraw these three acts but however the uh, farmers have uh, continued the protest with the uh, strong resolve that it will only go back uh, the protest will only be withdrawn if the uh, three anti farmer acts are uh, withdrawn and as well as the changes brought to the electricity act the amendments would be withdrawn we saw that the this campaign was taken to the states that went to uh, elections recently and the uh, ruling party has suffered huge reverses despite spending um a huge uh, amount of money and corporate media assisting in their campaign despite that they had to face reverses in this elections so i think the government is sticking uh, uh, to their adamant stand at their own peril the uh, farmers of our country the working class supporting us in a big way we have um, come here ready to carry on this struggle uh, till victory and uh, the government better understand that uh, we, uh, the struggle is going to go on and we are not going to allow these policies that will benefit only the uh, likes of adanis and ambanis and their ilk that uh, we will not allow its implementation here we also see how whenever there are protests uh, in haryana there have been brutal attacks on the uh, farmers when they have protested against ministers and chief minister recently in shivpur uh, in uh, madhya pradesh the uh, union agriculture minister was shown uh, uh, there was a protest against him and uh, that was also a brutal lati charge uh, a baton charge was uh, uh, we found there but in haryana yesterday after a massive protest the district administration has been forced to withdraw all the cases they have been forced to withdraw all the cases and also uh, 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 whatever uh, damage has been uh, the vehicles of the farmers have suffered damages compensation to be paid for that and so on so that uh, is uh, shows that this movement has only grown from strength to strength and we are not going to get cowed down by these kind of uh, 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 police action or uh, repression that this government is unleashing we will march on till our demands are met right uh thank you comrade viju for joining us today and that's all the time we have thank keep you, watching sir. people's dispatch